Welcome to the world of Jones Nose. Today, I'm gonna show you how to do glue down wood flooring without making a mess. Today, on Jones Nose. It's so beautiful, you and me. We meant to be. Hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tim. I'm a flooring and stair contractor. And as usual, helping me in the videos are my sons, Tristan and Hunter. So today I'm here to talk to you about glue down wood flooring. Now there's a lot of contractors, installers, and even some homeowners that have done vinyl and laminate floor installations. And everyone thinks it's the same thing, right? I can install any type of flooring. Well, I'm here to say it's not the same thing. There's a lot more that's involved. When you're doing glue down wood flooring, you're dealing with a lot more expensive products your mistakes are really expensive when you make them. You don't get do-overs. You can't unclick the floor, re-click it, and be done with it. Glue down is forever. You don't want to remove glue down with flooring. I'd rather remove tile. It's that serious. That glue really holds. So I'm not here to scare you though. I'm here to show you how to do it. And I have a method that I've worked on over the years and I've fine-tuned to make glue down wood flooring really easy for me and I can teach you how to do it. So without any further ado, let's hit it. So we're installing one of my favorite wood floorings today. It is Naturally Aged Floors Medallion Collection. I really love this engineered wood. It's a high quality, it's a wide plank, big wear layer. It's got all the bells and whistles and it's one of my favorite products. So let's show you how we install it. today is three bedrooms they currently have carpet we're going to remove that and install our glue down wood flooring over a concrete subfloor one of the first things we want to do is to lay the floor out properly we're going to be putting feature strips in a couple of the doorways that's the board that runs across the doorway here it's basically a border piece before we put any glue down though we want to get this board cut in properly the easiest way to do that is to mark the door jam that it's going to go under on both sides and then we can take it outside and get it cut. This feature strip really dresses up the doorways and it's the first thing you see when you come into the room and it makes a huge difference. It gives your floor a lot of character and looks amazing. I normally butt this feature strip right up to the tile or carpet but in this case here the tile was just a lot lower so we're gonna put a silver cap here but we're gonna actually change it up a little bit by changing the color of this silver cap. The color change is at my client's request and will be in one of the other parts of this series. If you're not familiar with the silver caps, then you must be new to my channel because I use them a lot on a lot of my jobs. So if you wanna learn more about them, I have several videos, my secret doorway thresholds, and seven ways to improve your vinyl floor. I'll put the link above and in the description for these videos. So it's time to lay this floor out properly, and the way to do that is with chalk lines. Let's listen in on the job as my sons and I set this floor up with chalk lines. We have to lift that board up. Let me draw a line where that board is. 22, okay, sorry, I did it in the right place. You're not taking it out. I'm gonna take it out right now. Three row, three boards start. So we're doing the feature shift. We're gonna lock in. How does it look on the other marks? It look pretty good? My mark is good, the middle mark is a little... I guess I'm okay here. You're okay there? Alright. So you're ready to spread that glue. Now I've seen contractors and installers just, they're rear and roaring ready to go and they just want to kick that bucket over and start spreading the glue. This is where the mess begins. You have to be careful. You don't want to get glue on your arms, on your hands. It gets on your hands, you transfer it onto the walls. You get it in your hair. Before you know it, it's all over the top of the floor. And guess what? Glue does not come off that floor that easy. Sometimes there's a term in the flooring industry called etching the finish, where it actually leaves a haze spot where it burns into the finish. So even though you get that piece of glue off, 
You'll always see a haze spot. It looks like there's something in the finish forever. So you have to be careful with glue. I can remember a time years ago, and now he's not gonna want me to tell the story, but one of the first times I took my son, I won't say which one, to the job site. And let me tell you, as the day progressed, he first started out, he got glue on his shoe, and then he started tracking it on the floor. So we took his shoe off. Then he got glue on his socks, started tracking it on the floor. So we took his socks off. Next thing you know, he had it on his arms and his shirt. He has no shirt on. By the time I took him home that night, all he had left was his bathing suit on. <laughs> You have to be careful, stay within the lines, spread it properly, and take your time. I'm going to talk about the glue we're doing today. It is a multi-grip by Bostix, and there's two ways that you can spread it. Two different trowels give you two different results. You can use a trowel that just puts enough glue to hold it to the floor, or you can use a bigger trowel that actually puts a vapor barrier down and bonds it to the floor. So if you're going over concrete, I highly recommend that you use the bigger trowel and put the vapor barrier down because it will protect you from anything below the floor. Rising moisture in the concrete, a leak in the slab, no matter what it is, you're protected. If you're on the first floor on concrete, it's a must. And that's what we're doing today. What about the dark and light? Mm. Practically That's the crazy little guy. Those little short boards look a lot darker. See those two short boards behind you? I guess some have more of the white in it than others. I don't know. You need to get familiar with your floor like we were doing there. Determine how many dark and how many light boards that you have so you can blend it properly. So it's time to start installing our boards. I love to lay my floor from the line to the wall whenever possible. Walls aren't straight, the line is. That way I know I'm starting the floor perfectly straight. We want to give our floor a completely random look. So no two starting boards should be the same whenever possible. In our case here, we're locking them in to the feature strip with the groove end of the board going into the tongue on the feature strip. If we weren't doing a feature strip, we'd be doing the same thing, just up against the tile instead of the feature strip. As you see, we use our mallets to get the joints to close, and once we get the boards to close, we then tape them together with blue tape only. And as you see, we're putting wedges into the wall to keep our floor in place. It's really important. You have to tape it and then wedge it, and your floor will not move. And as we're doing this the whole time, we are staying on that line that we originally snapped. This is going to guarantee that our floor is straight. I've seen too many floors that are laid crooked and there's nothing you can do about it once you glue it down. So you see my technique here. As we finish the first run, which was three rows in the first room, we then jump over to the second room and we'll start that room. Now you noticed in the first room, I started at the line, which is my preferred way to install floor. Walls aren't straight. I like to start on the line and work my way to the wall, but every situation is different. So in the second room, it made more sense to start under the door jam where I could get the right amount of spacing to the tile and then work my way to the line. But when I get to the line, I just have to take my time to make sure that I'm perfectly straight to the line with my floor. So you can actually get an arc in the floor without even realizing it. If you have a run that's over 10, 12, 15, 20, 30 feet for sure, you can actually get a little arc in the floor and you wouldn't even know it if you don't follow that line. And then by the time you get to the other side of the room, you may have a four inch piece on one end of the floor and a two inch on the other. And that's where it gets messy and looks terrible. If you're not doing multiple rooms and you're just doing one room of flooring, wait about 30 or 40 minutes once you finish a section of floor before you spread more glue. When you get back on the floor, you don't want the boards moving under you. So how do you figure out which situation is best for your room? Do you start at the line? Do you start at the door jam? 
every situation in every room is different. If you're not sure, drop me a comment and maybe I can help you figure out where you should start your floor. So if you found this video useful, be sure to check out part two of this series where we dive really deep into how to spread glue, how to make cuts, and a lot more really interesting aspects of a glue down installation. So be sure to ding that bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. And of course, like us. If you're new to the channel, be sure to check out some of our other content. We have lots of great videos on how to install wood, laminate and vinyl, as well as stairs and more. Plus my favorite, product reviews. I review wood, laminate and vinyl. I put vinyl up against laminate. I run them over, I dunk them, I submerge them, I do whatever it takes to find out which of these floors are best for you. If you haven't subscribed yet, I want you to take out your favorite floor and mallet, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. Thanks for watching.